Content marketing is quite simply the easiest and fastest way to build your business in today's world. We can see this across all sorts of influencers, whether it's Gary Vaynerchuk or Alex Ramosi or Cody Sanchez or whoever the big name is in your industry. They put out an ungodly amount of content and it works. It's the reason why they are successful because they know how to leverage their knowledge, put it into content, expand that content across the internet, which opens up opportunities for them to make more money. You can do the same, but you don't have to have the crazy budgets that they have to create content. I heard one time that Alex Hermosi and maybe Layla Hermosi also were spending $65,000 a month just on content. It's probably way higher than that now. We don't have that, right? But we, what we do have is some of the tools to be able to take the same tactics that they have to put out more content. And as long as you're good at creating content, whether it's video like this or written like a blog or a newsletter, creating more content is going to get more eyeballs. And if it's good, it's going to get you more business. Now, here are five ways that you can create content a little bit like Alex Ramosi or a Gary Vaynerchuk or a Cody Sanchez. Okay, tactic number one is to create a piece of content and then repurpose that content many, 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 many times. Okay, so here's the perfect example. So Alex Hermosi uh, and Layla Hermosi and all of these influencers, they create long form content, right? So here's a video about the lessons that Alex learned from marriage. Okay, I'm not going to play it, but you can see he does a long form sort of interview or, um, um, you know, monologue on what he learned, right? Then if you go over to Instagram, he posts a very short clip of that same video focused on a very specific sort of hook that they probably know is going to do or they think is going to do well on Instagram, right? So that's just one example of taking a long form video and repurposing it into a short form video for another platform. Now do the same thing for Twitter or X, do the same thing for TikTok, do the same thing as he's doing on Instagram. Okay, put the same thing on LinkedIn, but each platform has a slightly different audience or, or an audience that has a slightly different mindset. So you want to test all of this content across and you can keep going. I'm sure that the transcription from this video was exported and put into a blog post or a newsletter or social media captions. And you can keep repurposing and repurposing and repurposing. You can even go deeper into repurpose specific parts of that video into a whole new video, a topic that gets a lot of attention can be created into a whole new video. So repurpose your content so that you don't have to constantly think up new ideas all the time. That's tactic number one. Okay, tactic number two is to partner up and collaborate. Again, these big influencers, yes, they have thought leadership and people respect them and follow them for that, but they take it one step further and often collaborate with other people. We see an example here where Cody Sanchez went and spent a day with the Hermoses. All right. Again, not going to watch the video, but you can scroll through here and they chat in their boardroom. She asks them questions. She puts out a video about it. And this video gets 134,000 views, right? So again, collaborating allows you to share audiences. We also see this with influencers that meet up and create content together. Both influencers share it with their audiences and they get double or however many uh, multiples of exposure because they share audiences. Okay, tactic number three is to utilize user-generated content. So it depends on the industry you're in is how you do this, right? So UGC or user-generated content, if you're selling a product, you're a D2C company, simply means that when somebody loves your product or sometimes you can encourage them to create content using your product, and then you use that content in your own paid media strategy or on your own social media, that's user-generated content. In the realm of uh, creators or thought leadership or more B2B style, User-generated content can simply be somebody else using your knowledge, your content to create their own content. So here we see this guy, Justin Lalonde, Lalonde um, and he is creating content using the thought leadership or concepts of Alex Hermosi. Right now, I am creating content and I'm mentioning Alex Hermosi, Cody Sanchez, Gary Vaynerchuk, right? 
So this is a form of digital PR, but it's also a form of user generated content because they're using the knowledge. I'm using the knowledge. This guy's using the knowledge of her, the, her Moses or Alex or Mosey to create his own content. So leverage user generated content and you can even encourage other people to do so. Again, this blends digital PR, but you might have ideas that you want to float over to another creator and say, Hey, I've got this framework that might be valuable for your audience. Hey, um, you know, I'd love to do an interview on your podcast, you know, those kinds of things. So user generated content, digital PR can really help expand your audience by tapping into other people's audiences. Okay. The next thing you can do is get granular with guest posting and your own blogging. So Blogging's relatively easy now, especially with ChatGPT, if you know how to work prompts and then add your own human touch onto it. And then you can extend that into guest blogging. So I did some research. It doesn't look like the Hermoses typically do a lot of guest posting per se, but they do have uh, interviews. And so I found them on a bunch of different articles. And the uh, the journalist used the Hermosi, uh, Alex Hermoses stories and uh, backstories and content to uh, create an article, right? So we don't really know. Did Alex or Mosey or his PR team pitch this to them or did they just reach out and ask Alex or Mosey to create content or did they just do it without even asking altogether? We don't know. But what you can do, because you're probably not Alex or Mosey getting people knocking on your door asking for interviews, what you can do is, like I said in the previous tactic, is to create something that's valuable white paper, a video, a slide deck, or just a concept, uh, or having specific knowledge about an industry and reach out to other content creators and publications asking if this would be interesting for their audience and you'd love to collaborate on it, right? And so that's a, for, that's a modern day form of guest posting, whether it's visual content or blog content. And of course, you can own that content in your own blog or your own newsletter as well. But Again, guest posting and guest blogging gets you into other people's audiences, which gets you more exposure than just writing inside your inside of your own audience. Okay, and the last one is to think evergreen. Sure, you can do trending topics, right? But as soon as the trend is over, that article or that piece of content might not get as much exposure. And so you lose the kind of long tail effect of creating content. So when you're creating content, Try to think of something that is not going to go away for a long time. Like this video, for instance, content marketing is not going to go away for a very, very long time, if at all, ever. The platforms might change, but people are always going to have a voice and create content. And so figuring out how to repurpose that content and whatever platforms are popular at the time is going to be valuable for me and this video, right? Uh, we look over here, Alex from Mosey or the Hermoses, they own acquisition.com where they give a ton of free resources away to anybody trying to start and grow their business. Now they're doing it selfishly because if they help people grow their businesses, they're going to be in their ecosystem and there's a possibility that they could turn around and buy that company once it becomes successful above 2 million or 3 million or whatever they have as their threshold. So they're creating this evergreen machine content machine on their website that you can get books, courses, workshops, you can check out their media, you can ask to uh, to partner with them. You can check out their investment firm, but mostly there's tons and tons of content that's for free here. And it's mostly evergreen. I've watched a few videos. I've consumed a few pieces of the content and it's all stuff that's going to live on for the next five or 10 years. So think about creating evergreen content so that it acts like a snowball and you're not just rolling the same size ball down the road every single time. Instead, it's getting bigger, it's getting bigger, it's getting bigger, meaning your audience is getting bigger and bigger and bigger because that content you created five years ago is still resonating with people today. All right, and a quick little bonus tip is use a tool to try to measure everything you possibly can. There's so many tools out there. You could start as simple as a Google Analytics or you could go as crazy as a power BI if you're a business watching this, right? A business intelligence platform. But whatever you're doing, try to measure it, right? You can use Google Analytics for free to measure a lot of things, connectors to your website. You can start to look at other platforms and just measure analytics on there. Um, all platforms mostly nowadays have analytics, whether you're posting on a LinkedIn, like using Taplio, for instance. It's a software that I use for LinkedIn engagement and posting. They've got analytics on there right? Tweet Hunter, which 
is actually the same company owns owns uh, owned by the same company as Taplio for Twitter or X they've got analytics on there so make sure you're paying attention to your analytics at the beginning just make sure your audience is growing your views and your audience is growing right because you need to have that mass consumption to be able to really measure what people like or don't like if you're talking to only five people at a time it's hard to really know what matters and what doesn't to them. So that's a little bonus tip. If this video is helpful, thank you so much for watching. Share the video and check out my website, jtimmerman.com, if you want a bunch of free resources to grow your business. And I'll see you next time.